A condition of cohabitation known as concubinage lacks the protections of marriage. Since people have been on the planet, having a mistress has been a tradition. The original reasons for a man to have a wife were for sexual fulfillment and to produce many offspring, though most concubines were used for this purpose. Welcome back to another exciting video. Today's video is about horrific things that were normal to Asian concubines. Before we start the video, please like, subscribe, and press the bell icon, since any children that resulted from a mistress were deemed illegitimate and, unless permitted by their father, had no rights to inherit. Concubinage was almost solely used by the wealthy and the ruling class. We cover the treatment of concubines in ancient Asia in this film. In pre-modern China, having more than one wife at a time was illegal and socially unacceptable. However, having concubines was permissible. Since the beginning, affluent males have added concubines to their households in addition to their wives. Although concubines had a better social status than servants or enslaved people, buying one was comparable. From the Eastern Hand era onward, according to the earliest records, a man could have as many concubines as he could afford to buy. There was a legal restriction on how many concubines a man could have. A man was allowed to have more concubines the higher his rank and the nobler an identity he held. The treatment and circumstances of a concubine varied depending on the social standing of the man to whom she was connected and how his wife treated him. Concubines did not bring a dowry to a partnership like wives did. A concubine was not permitted to remarry or return to her native country after becoming widow, and a concubinage relationship could be established without the rituals associated with marriage. The wife typically held a higher status than the concubine. She would receive an offering from her boys following the passing of a concubine. However, the concubine's grandchildren only made offerings to their grandfather's wife and did not carry on these offerings. According to historical accounts, concubines were once buried alive alongside their masters to keep their companionship in the afterlife, until the Song Dynasty, elevating a concubine to the wife's status was regarded as a grave societal sin. The standing of concubines increased during the Qing Dynasty. If the first wife had passed away and the concubine was the only survivor, it was acceptable to elevate the concubine to the wife's status. Concubine mother's tablets appeared to have been more frequently put in ancestral family altars during this time, and some lineages' genealogies included concubine mothers. Additionally, the prohibition against forcing a widow to remarry was extended to widowed concubines during this time. The Qing Dynasty's emperor had many freeborn ladies from illustrious families as concubines. The majority of the applicants were between the ages of 14 and 16. The selection criteria included virtues, behavior, character, appearance, and physical state. Despite the restrictions placed on Chinese concubines, there are numerous instances in history and literature of Lady Yehina, or M, who attained great power and influence. One of the most famous concubines in Chinese history was Nostalgic Sihai. The Xi'an Fon Emperor's sole surviving son, Tone Gi M, was born to Sihai when she joined the palace as a concubine. After her husband's passing, she ultimately took on the role of de facto ruler of Qing China for 47 years. Although the Magi Civil Code officially accepted monogamy, concubinage was still socially acceptable in Japan during this time. However, men still turned to concubines for entertainment, emotional support, and sexual satisfaction. The tradition at the time forbade respectable men and women from interacting amicably with one another. They created concubines out of males. During this time, having a concubine or concubine was regarded as a sign of wealth high prestige, and power. A lady having a lover was a reason for divorce and was also illegal. In those societies, women had few liberties. They were the family's lowest positions and see, it was typical for a poor parent to sell his daughter to a wealthy man so that she could serve as his concubine, earn money, and support the rest of the family. Additionally, many women were made into concubines by wealthy men or powerful rulers who merely liked how they looked. A massive collection of structures measuring a mile in width and four miles in diameter, Edo Castle was Japan's Versa. It resembled Buckingham Palace when the houses were united. It was where the shogun resided and ruled the nation with the aid of an army of government employees. However, unlike Sai, no women were mingling among the throngs of noblemen, who were seen flirting over the tops of their fans, as in Beijing's Forbidden City and the Sioux of the Ottoman Sultans. The women of Edo Castle kept to themselves. Only the outer edge of the Omo, the palace where the bureaucrats handled state matters, was open to visitors. The residents of the shogun and his servants lived in the middle palace, also known as Lanaroku, on the other side of which was a solid wall slicing through the complex of buildings pierced with a single opening. The shogun's daily life in the palace epitomized elegance. Only one man could pass through the door. The lady prepared for the shogun's three daily visits by spending their mornings at their Tourette. Everybody had tried to assist her. Shaving her eyebrows and touching up the blacking on her teeth came first. All mature women then stained their teeth with Sumikla's gall sake dye, the iron. A lady with bare teeth would have observed. Barbarous. The shogun lived in the women's castle in the outer and middle policies. Plot and intrigue from rival courtier Jolene groups encircled him. 
He could unwind in the interior palace with his women's family while they waited to welcome the shogun. What is her name were the words that all the younger ladies hoped to hear. This was the signal that the shogun had noticed them and wanted to spend the night with them to fulfill the shogun's primary duty. Additionally, the mansion was built to give him air. To ensure that every child born there was the son of the shogun and nobody else, no other males were allowed entry. Any woman who purchased the shogun's heir was promised to raise and pay and the title of mother of the heir. And later, when he became the shogun, she could advise him on what choices to make and which petitions and courts to support. In the 250 years that the shoguns governed Japan, only two of the 15 shoguns were the sons of the shogun's wife. People would shower her with presents hoping she would speak to the shogun on their behalf. All the others were female offspring. The Kyoto woman was typical. Lady from a noble family wed a captured shogun to tether him to Kyoto's imperial court. If the wife had any children, they usually died in infancy, and Kyoto aristocrats tended to be relatively weak and inbred. The concubines were supposedly from noble families. Based on their rank and physical characteristics, all the girls were selected. The only people the shogun ever met were nobility because only they were permitted to enter his company. But in reality, the shogun would frequently notice a beautiful girl among the lower-ranking maids or even on the street. Concubinage is still practiced today in several forms. Women are not as compelled to participate as once, and Asians in wealth still make up the majority. In Asia, having a concubine or mistress is considered to be expected. Women's roles are still subordinate to men's in society. Today, influential businesswomen value women. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more exciting content.